since the beginning of Summer Split. Welcome everyone to week one of the Summer Split. 107 games have been played, 50 competitors, 10 teams, but after this weekend, only two remain. I want to get your quick thoughts on Yuji. I don't really think anything of him, and he has an LCS support, so we're going to win. I think he's not that, not that good, to be honest, yeah. And this time, you can be a part of the action, too, because the Knackle finale will air live from the Riot Games Arena. Mark your calendars and purchase your tickets to be a part of the live studio audience. Not convinced? Let's hear what the community thought of the premiere. Duffy, you just saw the finals, what would your review be? That was incredible. Do you recommend folks at home buy a ticket? Yes, I recommend they buy two. Do you recommend the show? 100%, 1000%. Actually, I rate this higher than Oppenheimer and Barbie combined. Maybe Toy Story 3 above it? Toy Story 3 was really good. Close to Toy Story 3. Yeah. Do you recommend people at home come see it? You need to go see it right now, right now. Get your tickets, get your tickets. Go, 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 go. But no spoilers. Don't miss out on the cinematic event of summer. We'll see you there. Hello and welcome back everybody for our post game breakdown after game number two and reminder that the LCS Challengers League is brought to you by Turo, the world's largest car sharing marketplace where you can book any car for just about any occasion. Forget about your boring car rentals at Turo.com. Um, thanks so much for them for helping us out here. And now we are in because we got our Turo key drive to talk about in a bit. But first, I want to get your initial reactions. Get back 2-0 for Evil Geniuses Challengers. Are they going to make the sweep happen? I still don't think they're going to sweep. I think they definitely okay. look like the stronger team this series. But like, I feel like Fly has to have one in their back pocket. I feel like I'd be in this exact situation Fly was just in. And they're like... No, we gave them, we tried this, we gave them Tristana, Kaisa, Rel, Jax, all their favorite champions. Yeah. Screw that, yeah. we're gonna play like standard stuff, bring it back, really just bring everything you can. This shows what kind of team you are, regardless of whether they win or lose this game. Teams either do one or two things, either hit their second win and play really hard here, or they roll over and die. So, but I think that fly quest, um, the type of team that'll fight back, I think EG will still take it in the end. They look like the stronger team, but I feel like I've seen this scenario a lot of times. Yeah, we did just see DSG reverse sweep yesterday. Let's yeah. see if FlyQuest have it in them. But we are ready for Arturo Key Drive. A big, impactful moment from this last game that we felt was the most impactful moment, hence why it gets the title beatdown. I want you to walk me through this one and why it was so important. And I mean, we said it on the draft. It was the very first moment of this play. The Moonfall comes through. There is no last breath from Spyrax. And that's the problem. That's the combo. That's what this comp is all about above all else. And the fact that... It, it, whether Spyrax wasn't in range and Yuji pulled the trigger too soon or Spyrax wasn't ready, that's a slip up that costs you the game. FlyQuest were yeah. still in a good position at this point. They had the soul. They had a setup where if they managed to find the right team fight angle, they can get Elder and win. But they didn't do it. EGC got it. And they finished the game off with a 12,000 gold lead. And now they're at match point. Despite the fact that FlyQuest got that Dragon Soul, it yeah. was still like, look at that gold just plummet <laughs> the very end right True. there. Oh my god. Yeah, that was a shocking end after a get back. We did get to a late game. I would argue this is a late game scenario yet again. Mm -hmm. No, for sure. Um, if this is, uh, if you're fighting Elder Baron situation, that's the, that is the late game scenario. Yep. <laughs> and it was very close. It could have gone either way. I can honestly see a world that when uh, Diana pulls on that guy, they kill King and lose the fight. I think that's realistic. But just again, the key thing is, if you're going to use your Diana roll, even if your Diana is griefing, not saying he was, you have to press the button or you're probably <laughs> going to lose. Yep. So it was just, I don't know, it was a really sad way to end the game. I hope FlyQuest have some more fight in them in this next game and uh, probably not give him Trist again because this Yasuo Diana thing uh, didn't work out completely and I doubt he has another answer to it. So I ex think we can expect them to ban Tristana and um, head a different direction. I think that's key for them to pick up the victory here because they didn't give Tristana in game one. They didn't give Tristana in the first series that they went up against them. Surprising to see a threat. Now, that's the first thing you said when he joined the cast get back was like, how did this <laughs> uh, advance in? Obviously, they felt they had their own counter. It did not work out for them. Back to the drawing board. I think back to the standard bands. But with that said, we're ready. I believe for our Rally Cry halftime show, while we give the players time to rest, recuperate, and recover and get ready four pick and ban for game number three. We're going to play a little bit of game. Uh, Beatdown, did you catch any of the last Rally Cry halftime show that we had? 
a little bit. I was telling Deserex where I may be playing cards I don't fully understand. So this is going to be interesting. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I have done my best in okay. the span of one game to actually build an entire uh, card game uh, with okay. rules in tow. Uh, and I did not lab this to see if it is at all reasonable for power, uh, you know. Uh, all levels. right. Uh, we so ball. one of these decks might be way better than the others is what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. So let's touch back on what the cards do. Faisal. Of course, is they going to be represented by uh, get back, get back? I'm just going to have you up on the top side because that's the side of the screen that you are on. Beat down, you'll be representing evil geniuses. Armeo's effect okay. is plus one power level in the first turn, so he starts with five, but he gives other power, uh, other teammates plus one power level. Uh, oh. On the third turn of play, he gives teammates an additional one power level. So he scales, right? Armeo scales. We know this. Not the most power himself, but he does scale. It's kind of small, hard to see. So sorry. Maybe I can just make these bigger, actually. Uh, get back. You're going to be piloting Faisal. So Faisal, <laughs> in his abilities, actually, here, I'll just make it bigger. So that way everybody can see it a little bit better. Boom. Oh, yeah. Look at that. So your effect is if your opponent has two champions destroy this card. Oh, wait, I did not factor that into the, the game. Uh-oh. Well, that's going to be funny. <laughs> uh, number two you, is you uh, if on a tank, he gains plus one power level. It starts with six power level, though. So are you two ready to go? Actually, you know what? Let me, let me explain a bit of the rules of the game. <laughs> what you have to do is you have to break through at least one of these middle structures to hit <laughs> the opponent's nexus. Once you break through one, you have an access to go in. But if you lose all of your power level, then you are stunned for one turn. And uh, as you defeat other things... Oh, oh, Armeo's going all over the place. What is oh. happening right now? Wait, what oh, happened? this is funny. I thought it was right, intentional. Maybe if I do this, boom. Now you can see him again. Okay, a little bit bigger. If you take down a structure, you get a bonus card that you can draw, at least a champion or an item. And every turn, you will draw an additional teammate to help you out. Have I explained the rules thoroughly? I think so. I have no idea right. what's going on. Let's stop. Let's nice. have some fun with it. Well, let's put Beatdown <laughs> uh, for first turn. Beatdown, you are our Mayo. Your first turn, you don't get to draw a teammate, but you do get to make a decision. You have plus one power level. You have five power level. What do you want to hit right now? You could take the Scuttle if you just want to start off easy uh, and simple, or you can go for one of the other objectives. Mm -hmm. What do I get if I kill the Scuttle? You unlock an extra item or champion. Ooh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, boom. We're going to hit the Scuttle Crab, which means that Scuttle is now at zero health. Congratulations, Beatdown. Again, I have not labbed this, so there's a good chance that you're just automatically going to win now. Because... Who knows, man? Wait, Who did knows? your Nexus disappear? Why did your Nexus disappear? It's oh, that's hilarious. untargetable now, by the way. I, I don't, I don't know where the Nexus went. You do have a Nexus. That's the health for the Nexus in the bottom right there. Uh, you unlock... Da -da -da. The Lilia card, which is also not showing. Oh, no. This is all falling apart now. Oh, no. What if I pull it up like this? Oh, now I think I know what happened. I think I know what happened. Our Mayo is way off base. Everything's going to have to move. Well, here you go. You can you can read uh, Lilia while I fix everything else. <laughs> so the Lilia card. You can see the effects. You can spread your targets. So now you can along, you don't have to target one thing. And you do burn damage. So at the end of every turn, you actually do a little bit more damage to those so, things. So I can target multiple things now? You can now target multiple things. That's kind of broken. I like it's this. It's insane. Oh, Armeo's back. Welcome Let's go. Back, Armeo. Let's go, Armeo. Boom. And there's the Nexus. It's kind of in place. Perfect. That's, that's about as close as we're going to get it. Okay. Now you are up, Get Back. You are piloting... The fly quest deck. Can I kill what the crab? For? Can you Where's what? The crab already dead. Can I kill crab the crab? Or is the you crab have all dead? the crab is already dead. Beatdown took the crab from you. Dude, this uh, is like 2020 uh, scuttles OP. You could go for the nexus. Yeah, you could just I... now that the crab's gone, you can go right for that. Sure, hit him in the nexus then. Oh, getting aggressive already. So that means red nexus health goes down by six damage. You have the six power level. 14. Okay, do you want to scale beat down? Do you want to keep going to, for structures? Uh, no, I think it's time to hit oh, the wait, Nexus. Oh, wait, sorry. Also, I, I forgot. Also, oh, uh, get back. You get a teammate now. Because you're okay. on the blue side. Now, now I so do. you do unlock Spyrax. Only plus one power level. All the teammates will only have plus one power level. But do, what does Spyrax want to hit? Is he hitting Nexus also, or is he spreading damage? He doesn't have an effect? Why is Jalal so useless? <laughs> Say something, Jalal. All right, hit his Nexus. <laughs> hit the Nexus. Let's go. Nexus down to now 13 health. Get uh, beat down. What do you want to go for? Uh, I want to also go for his Nexus, but I can hit multiple things apparently, right? So You can spread your damage, and you also now, because it is your second turn, 
unlock a new teammate. So let's see who you unlock. You unlock King. Nice. King also has no effect, but he yep. is plus. Yep. He is two power level because I have our mail on he my is. team. That's right. And I like that. You you you, you learned the I tech. Read the rules. So there you go. So that means, and because of the Lilia card, our mail has six. So I want to attack his nexus, and I also want to attack the turret. Okay, and remember, if you hit one of the teammates and you bring their power level to zero, you stun them for a turn. But I like that. So how much damage are you doing to the Nexus? How much to the turret? So, wait, how does how does it spread out? Like, you can, can I choose. just do so a certain amount? So if you have six power level, you can spread three, three. You could go two, oh, one. Oh, never mind. No, I got to go all for the Nexus, man. So it's All gonna be for like, the what? Nexus. All Five, right, just kidding. Six, We're going right. Wow. Eight. Again, I do we're eight labbing damage. this one live. So this yeah, is going to yeah, be a lot yeah, of yeah. fun. So down to 14 health. Actually, where does this no, six no, no, health? No, no, 12, 12. Yeah, wait. Oh, okay, because you're sending everybody in. Yeah, I'm, I'm throwing everyone at him. Got him. And now at the end of every turn, it's going to take that one. That's where the extra sixth came from. You're up. Get back. What do you want to go for? You draw another teammate. Okay, who is Let's it? See Let's see what you it. get. You get the... Oh, wait, no, that's the wrong one. Just don't oh, give him a tank. Hilarious. Just don't give him a tank. Just don't give him a tank. You know what? Because you're behind, I'm just going to give you all of your teammates. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> we have less than a minute left. So, you know, just, just go for it. Try your best here. Just hit him in the face then, right? Like, Apparently. hit the Nexus. Hit him in the face, uh, 10 more down. damage to the Nexus. <laughs> wow, uh, you know you what? Maybe coming up with an entire card game mechanic uh, in Look. over the span of 30 minutes was a mistake. Beat down, what are you gonna <laughs> do? Blue Nexus takes one damage due to passive burn. Yes, uh, I would like to hit it. Wait, don't I get another card because it's my turn? You do get another card, so but I you're also like ahead, card. so I don't want to give it to you, but I'll give it to you anyway. Boom, there's Yeah, smoothie. I was gonna say. So that means one, two, no, rather two, four, seven, uh, I'm gonna hit the Nexus again. <laughs> what is it? Five, seven, You know nine. what? Maybe on second thought I, I should damage. have thought better rules, but congratulations, get back, because you just hit the Nexus here, right? I feel like, yeah, he well, just does. I need it to be low accurate, so I'm gonna hit my own Nexus. Ah, <laughs> there we go. All right, well, the blue Nexus blows no up way. then. I win, that apparently. is the game. Thank you, gentlemen, for <laughs> participating. Oh, I just gave it 40 health on accident. All right, zero health. Boom. And that is. Basically, how that game went. I think that kind of summarizes it, right? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Pretty much. Essentially. Wait, essentially. wait, when you really think about it, yeah. I mean, FlyQuest kind of did themselves in in the end. We'll wow. go back and read, look at some of the rules and maybe come up with some better rules or, you know, more all balance. Of them. But thank you for participating in our <laughs> NACL card game competition. We're ready for pick and ban of game number three, though. Elimination on the line for FlyQuest. One more loss and they're out of here. Evil Geniuses need to pick up one more win and they punch that ticket to the lower bracket finals. So, take it away. All right, I'm just saying you can kind of tell when someone watches the anime versus actually playing the card game. <laughs> that was a lot of scuffed rules, man. <laughs> this was, uh, it was very Duelist Kingdom, I will admit, but I had a good time. I get back, had me in his clutches, chose the honorable decision of going <laughs> with the lore, so respect. Of course, of course, gonna keep it accurate. You know, maybe yeah. you made Flyquest <laughs> and maybe wrong this game. Maybe. Which, uh, you know, does lead us to uh, the draft of this game, number three. I want to know, get back from you personally, what do you think is going to be different? Last man, last time was Ivern, but of course this was uh, Blue Side, I believe it was. So it's going to be a Tristana. It has yeah. to be. Yeah, it has to be. I feel yeah. like either that or they're going to ban a piece of Kaisa and take the other one and give Tristana. Yeah, so that makes yeah, the most sense to ban yeah. Tristana. Now, here's the decision. I have a feeling they might go for, oh, they left LeBlanc up this time, actually. That was not what I Okay, guessed. here's the thing. Does Spirax play Kaisa mid? An answer I don't know. Question I actually don't know the answer to. He has but played it. He has played it. This? Okay, but, then might just play oh, Jace. Oh, but it's Kaiser Jace. Okay. Oh, well, you know, fair enough. Okay, Spirax, really big Jace guy. His, mm -hmm. uh, his Azir is banned. He's pretty much been playing Azir on every game. Big Jace guy. Makes sense. Matchup can be tough if... um th This matchup is very vision-centric. It's like, if you're safe to fight the LeBlanc, Jace will win trades. But the issue is, if you ever fight her and anyone's nearby, you get chained and die. So this yeah. will be very uh, vision-centric. Kai's a power pick. I think you can expect a Zyra Khan here out of EG. They love it. I thought they might even go as far to first pick Zyra Khan. I think yeah. they love this stuff. Um, I guess they would just respond with saying Nord uh, standard, like Nordless. He did pick the Leona last time, but... Um, yeah, honestly, it's, it's pretty standard. I think this looks more balanced than the last draft. The last draft <laughs> kind of sucked. So this one, uh, like, both teams have good options to play. You have Kaisa that can mark the LeBlanc. You have poke into Zaya, which Zaya hates getting poked. Uh, Yuji's on his poppy, great poppy player. I think yeah. this will uh, this game will play out a lot more evenly, I imagine. Yeah, I think I think this definitely, uh, I agree, this first rotation is uh, definitely less illegal than in game two. 
And the Poppy, I think, would be a really nice lock in there for mm. Yuji. Really good way to answer champs like the LeBlanc and the Rakan. One thing Same. I want to highlight, interestingly enough, and I want your opinion on this get back. Sure. Um, LeBlanc used to build static shit. Right now, yep. the only player in this league or in this playoffs who still builds it on LeBlanc is Ryoma. Do you think it's good still? I think it's solid. I think now when you play LeBlanc, it's a choice. It depends on your matchup. It depends on the game. You can go AP. AP LeBlanc is still good. AP LeBlanc yeah. was never bad. Oh, it's just that static shiv LeBlanc was, was just broken. insanely, disgustingly broken yes. for a bit. So now, now it no longer is. It's good. They're both just good. So I think okay. it depends. I think, um, I'm going to be real. In this game, Le being LeBlanc sucks. That's why I don't think fast pick LeBlanc's that strong anymore because it's less broken. Into Kaiser Poppy. Then there's so many issues with the interactions. You W forward, she presses W. Poppy can tag you with an E, and even if you fly away after, I um, mean, if you're not tackled into a wall, you get a stack. Kaiser can hunt you. Like, there's so many yeah. interactions that make it hard. I think that in this game, he's probably just going to go the Shiv. I think it's still fine. It's mm -hmm. definitely less good than it was. Um, it's really interesting, actually. I forgot Rel was up. So they, the reason they drop support is they can go Leona, Nautilus, or Rel. They would have felt very comfortable with any of those. So they feel like picking up the Poppy is more important. I assume whatever they leave, they're going to pick. They can even do Alistar if they really feel like it. So they have tons of support options here. Yeah, and I really I like that they're pinching our male's pool there. You take away the Viego, you take away the Vi, which not a lot of junglers are playing currently, but our Mayo does and is still able to get a lot of value on it. And already you have a comp that wants to go all in anyway. So I like that removal as well. I think oh, oh. Comp Mal has had an amazing series too. So it makes sense for them to uh, target him with these. For sure. I'm, I'm most curious as what the solo lane is going to be, especially top side for Surdy. Because uh, when we've seen EGC take this LeBlanc, you are mentioning it be uh, Static Shiv is a very big thing for Ryama when he does play this, but it's yeah. also the game plan that comes out of EGC. They play heavily towards those side lanes once they get a LeBlanc rolling. So that's why I'm curious as to what Surdy is going to take. Wow. An okay. Another side lane player right there would be a great one to have if it's the Jax. You get back, you're rolling your eyes, it looks like you don't like How the Jax. How does he keep getting Jack? No, man. <laughs> yeah. like Jax, Jax isn't insane here, yeah. but he's just like this whole playoffs. He has like nine games of Jax, and he's just yeah. over obviously really good at it like i don't know how he just keeps getting jacks <laughs> I, I feel like they're probably gonna do it again but i know he's clearly showed every game he does something even if they lose yeah. when he picks jacks he always yeah. does something so For like sure. i don't know how he's not being pushed to not play jacks unless they feel maybe they're like we love the puppy match up into jacks and we're gonna pick a different jungler pick pick jacks i dare you but still backs against the wall in this game like just Risky. ban Jax, man. He might do Gragas as well. I mean, Faisal loves Gragas, but I just feel like sadi has been so good on the Jax. Agreed. I mean, last time they, these two teams met, even though FlyQuest got the 2-0, Surdy got the better of Faisal. And this is kind of a moment where you can't let that one happen again. Agreed, it's not as high Gragas. impact as before in the last game, but it's still going to be a strong pick, especially in the hands of Surdy. And you called it. The Gragas comes through. Something to kind of break up the fight. And just add a lot more CC into your back pockets. It's a safe lane, though, most importantly. It's going to be interesting to see how this game does unfold, but later and later we get into this. Because, again, Evil Geniuses can't play towards those side lanes, but also in longer fights, Ivern gets a heck of a lot of value in the 5v5 scenarios there. It does. Uh, and if King or Smoothie are doing well, and you can set up these uh, flanking positions coming out for EGC, it's actually a really good chance for them to take this. How are you feeling about this get back? What, what, what composition do you favor more? I think that they are both actually pretty equal, to be honest with you. The red team has super range on them. It is really hard for Zai to play this game. Zai can yeah. pretty much never right-click because she's never in range to right-click anyone. Really? In theory, Greg should have a good time versus Jax. If you play around mid, Jace is fine. Ball lane matchup, I believe Kaisen North gets push. But on the flip side, I feel like EGC just got all their favorite champions. So they might just beat him to death with comfort. Fair enough. I think I agree with you on that front there. And this again, this could be... The last game of the series here. Remember, loser goes home, and the winner goes on to that lower final to face Cincinnati Fear tomorrow. I knew what a statement it would be for Evil Geniuses to 3-0 the team that swept them oh, yeah. earlier on in the upper bracket. And it just really speaks to that development we've seen from Evil Geniuses the last three, four weeks here of the summer split. Again, we bid farewell to get back for this cast. Spam chat who you want to win. Fly C for fly quest. Uh, probably don't want to spam that right now when you're burning a flash a little bit that early. EGC for Evil Geniuses Challengers. And right here, it is game point. EGC, I, I, I kind of alluded to it earlier, but they, they just remind me of Saiyans, man. <laughs> you, you, you get your butt whooped, and what happens? You heal up the suddenly, Zenkai. your power level's higher. Yeah, exactly the same kind of buff. Uh, on that note, we'll see if... Uh, 
FlyQuest can get one buff of their own, taking a look at the mid lane Spyrax, see what he has to say about his opponents. Ryoma has a... Uh, he plays some champions really well, so definitely need to watch out for that, like Kizilbonk, for example. I think Ryoma is one of the better laners in uh, NACL, so as long as I'm like playing my laning, my laning phase like correctly and stuff like that, uh, I should be okay. I heard that example beat. What was the champion you said? He did say LeBlanc, and I <laughs> took to his credit, I, highlighting Ryoma, I think is a really smart there for, actually, uh, rather is smart there for Spyrax. I mean, Ryoma, he had a lot of struggles to split, but it wasn't just the uh, the joining of Surdy that helped turn things around. It was also how Ryoma finally started to set it up. And wow, I mean, surely this is just a kill. Yeah, this has to be. Oh no! Flash out of Yuchi to try and finish ah, it off. It yeah, there it is. A little bit too late coming out of our mail first blood to FlyQuest and Yuji getting some vengeance on the big bad wolf that is our mail. Yeah, you saw it. EG, our mail felt safe because of that aggressive vision they had, but there was nothing preventing Yuji from starting the Raptors. Oh, Here we my. go again. FlyQuest, ruthless aggression coming in these first opening minutes, forcing out not too much else from Smoothie. That was the nice thing right there. Smoothie didn't burn Flash to get away, so. Not going to be the biggest loss, but will leave King by himself. Yeah, and Smoothie will drop a, a good bit of XP if he ends up backing. That's why you see him in the area. He has that Rakan passive shield, and I like it. Winsa, King is still level one, and you still have Hex Flash to play with here. Oh, They're actually gnarly. just going to zone. They know that they have the advantage. They know Armeo is on the other side of the map because of what he's lost. Oh. Ryoma versus Spyrax. Able to TOA. Spyrax wants the first blood. Can't wow. get it under the tower. Ryoma was, look at this, a lot of early aggression coming out from FlyQuest pretty much all over the map right now, B. Yeah, and you can see it. Armeo, or rather get back. He even talked about how if you move in and help out this LeBlanc, oh my oh god, my. so much Here action. Go. Underneath the tower, King Toronto. doesn't have his summoner spells. We'll be able to get one kill returned, and both supports end up getting the kills in the process. In the mid lane, a fight breaking out. Going forward, it's going to be Ryoma able to get one with the ethereal chains onto Yuji. Looking for the double kill. Distortion plus an auto is all you need to clean up Spyrax, but the cooldown will not come up in time. Do we have such a bloody game three here? FlyQuest who are fighting for their oh my, tournament. It's not lives. over. Oh, it's not flash. over. Masu! We see him do it time and time again. He knows where he needs to position and outplays King for a kill in the bottom lane. This is why we hype up a player like Masu and how well he's developed throughout the back half of summer. Just pushing his limits, looking to see what he could take away from his opponents and knew he had that angle on the King to go ahead and get the kill. All right, FlyQuest, they have this early 1500 gold lead oh. and now Masu, I mean, Probably fine. Yeah, this is kind of tough right here. It, oh, it is uh, Ivern. Oh, it's also an Ivern oh, without Flash. So congratulations, Masu. Kill number two. And this is such a crazy opening for FlyQuest. It all started with Yuji going for that invade because usually it's so easy for an Ivern to get that full clear off, but they just didn't know what was happening. Our male's forced to look for plays like these, and the angles really aren't working out for the. And I mean, props to Yuji and Spyrax. Like yeah. playing Fog really well being able to get that trade. It's just props to Ryoma for being able to answer as well. I really like what we're seeing out of Yuji in this game oh, because this cool. Armeo's kind of been in his head. Same thing here with Masu who plays this so damn well. I mean, we, we have yeah. numerous highlights of Masu doing plays like this. He's so aware of where he needs to position oh, cool. and getting those late flashes in. Yeah, that's the ping god apocalypse right there. Dude, it is. Really nice flash timing coming through from Masu. And you have an insane gold lead here. FlyQuest, get back, called it basically bar for bar. Backs against the wall, going back to more standard champions. A very standard draft and so far. It's been doing wonders for this FlyQuest squad. You can see the top of the charts. It's Masu and Yuji. They're very good places to have gold on the early game. And Yuji, he found his way back to the bottom side again. Doing a cover for this 2-0 Kai'Sa. Yeah. Yuji is active. The control ward will spot him out, which means Smoothie and King got to make Remember, no moves. Flash. They got to get away from this. He said no flash, but Rogue Charge not going to find a stun onto King. We'll be able to step away, but still another plate going for the bot lane of FlyQuest. Asu, so much income, only six minutes in. 
This early game has been cast catastrophic from EG. I mean, there's just so many things to look at. Armeo, how far behind Yuji he's fallen. King's down 20 CS because of how good Masu and Winsome were at zoning them off early and the plays we're seeing made, forcing them away from the turret. So, are uh, you fly quest? Oh, you my. Oh, hold on a second. Okay. Oh, my. Serdi going for the 1v1, forces the ultimate out. It will be traded through. FlyQuest, focus onto the dragon. Hey, your bot lane is so strong. This is an easy pickup. And when you have a comp that scales very favorably, a like dragon sacking isn't necessary for you, but picking up that first one so your opponent can't play for the soul anytime soon before you reach those crucial spikes is so important there. And yeah, your bot laner is so fed. So it is just a natural choice for FlyQuest challengers. My sights are really set on this Herald. That's going to be up in about a minute's time. I, Yuji has a pretty solid lead right now. I, oh. Masu is 2-0 and on this Kai'Sa, so you got to imagine this bot lane, they rotate up topside. That's an easy objective win. 10 out of 10. And Yuji now off of that recall is headed towards that direction uh, to deal with the Rift Herald that will be spawning soon. And what an early game coming out from Yuji so far, especially yeah. to best what you could consider some of his demons from times past you know back when uh yuji had his debut season uh spring 2022 guess who sent him to the lower bracket it was team liquid uh, uh team liquid challenges i want to say team liquid academy it's, it's very technically weird, one but, at the time yeah as now uh fight breaks out not much to be seen other than the mongolian machine yuji as i said Armeo knocked him out of the upper bracket back then, so this would be vengeance for Yuji, especially against such a skilled jungler uh, with the history and proving grounds as Armeo. And you can see what Yuji's been doing this whole game. He's had Armeo's number, top to bottom, start to finish. And now you have this lead where the play top doesn't work because Yuji's there. It opens you up perfectly for this Herald, and you don't even need to rotate. You just move Winsome up, who is here to cover, and Masu is level six, has both his summoners. I mean, he feels really good about just being in this lane. Look at him, he's walking up. Oh man, Masu's so confident, but uh, he's always played like it. I feel like uh, last spring, it was a, a, a case of almost arrogance and that arrogance coming into the summer has evolved into confidence, into really, really good play. I mean, well, it's what we want to see from a lot of our marksmen. As Ryoma starts a position against Spyrax. We're gonna chunk out a little bit of damage. Evil Genius is still empty-handed. Another fight breaks out over in the bottom lane. Featherstorm comes through. Masu will follow through wow. onto King. The Feathers fly. He's too low. Ignite goes through. Winsome's gonna fall, and Masu has a long way to run if he's gonna get out of this. And look who's headed into this direction. Headed down south. It's Ryoma. Masu's gonna have to pull out a hat trick if he wants to escape the grasp of one of the most dominant mid laners in oceanic history. Ryoma spots Masu. Masu that returns fire. Damage. So many autos coming in. Ethereal oh. Chains looking to find the mark. Able to run into the brushes. Now Masu feels confident to push what forward. There's a warning there. He's so Masu's going to flip it. They have to call another member. Send the Are army. Send the cavalry. Send the whole damn world. You're going to need it to fight Masu. This kid is too damn good. That was four people. We won't even really count King to make that one happen. And this could have been so much worse for EG's bottom lane, but King got level six just in time. And I mean, it was a long and very stressful in, uh, engage coming through here. But again, this is why we praise Masu. That understanding of his limits and the willingness to push it is something we love from up and coming players and something he just continues to exemplify here in Challengers League. And you, it really felt like he was dead to rights with uh, Ryoma coming over there. I know. But again, that, that's a static shiv on the LeBlanc right there, which means that burst damage is a little bit lower, and True. Masu capitalizes like a monster onto poor Ryoma. Yeah, and I mean, like, just everything about this play, again, so good at knowing exactly what he needs just to dodge out on flashes, the grand entrance, and that's really what makes that one possible. I mean, Masu, I'm pretty sure kills Smoothie if Armeo doesn't show up, which is unreal. Yeah. And he almost kills Armeo in the process, by the way. Look at that. Look at that. 100 health. 100 health was all that's left. It's and Masu's good. still looking for dives, man. King loses half his health as Masu gives a drive-by. Yeah, and this is supposed to be a, a trash item spike for Kaisa. Like, you are not that strong with Static Shiv, but he is just playing this one out so well. Oh, man. And, oh, the way FlyQuest has continued to attack this bottom lane. 
Oh, oh what a flash from Yuji. Instant. Armeo now dead. Looks like he's Smoothie dead. and he's King dead. are going to meet his the jungler. Here comes the teleport coming through. Able to get a double knock of Winston. going to be lost. traded down as the Featherstorm comes through. Now joining the fray is Ryoma. Masu a little bit too low, but we know how much of a threat he can be. Ryoma can't position forward because the front line of FlyQuest still going to hold strong. Spyrex throwing out the shock blast. Feathers flying over the wall. Coming out from King and FlyQuest. They try and pull off the dive, they give something right back to EGC. Big props to Smoothie there, using the quickness to buy time for the teleport. So they end up picking up a kill in exchange, or not even in exchange, just for free essentially, even though it costs the teleport. So that is a big oh, answer yeah. back, but it's not much. Because I don't know if you checked the gold lead in the last couple of minutes, Eric, but we have almost gotten up to 4K for yeah. FlyQuest. I mean, Masu is extremely ahead on this Kaisa. Oh, he has word. the most gold in the game, as we can see. And I like that FlyQuest. They haven't really been trying to prioritize these dragons. Again, they don't need them. Just continue stacking gold on this Kaisa. Just continue using those early game advantages you built up from basically level two that they're snowballing so very well. Now FlyQuest off to the races on this game number three when it counts the most. There's always remember, elimination is on the line. This is the lower bracket. If FlyQuest right. lose here, they are out of the tournament and we only have one more LCS affiliated challengers team left. That's right. FlyQuest in this do or die situation, really turning things up when it matters. And again, I favor the scaling of FlyQuest. So the fact that there are 3,000 gold up as we're approaching yeah. the 15-minute mark, it's about as good as you could feel. What more could you ask for? And you, with this power, you're seeing the lane assignment switch up a little bit, even though turrets haven't fallen yet, plates haven't fallen, but they're rotating Masu up. We're getting closer to that second Rift Herald, another objective that FlyQuest can just easily go for. And it's already Yuji setting up on the bottom side of the map to try and look for another play. It's been Ooh. a stranglehold onto the bottom lane of EGC. Ryoma's the one holding off right there right now, but you know Yuji doesn't mind diving forward. Now King catching out Winsome inside of the jungle. It's going to be a pick found. Killer Instinct goes through. King's trying to run away from this one, but here comes Armeo, able to get a shield onto King. Teleport found by Surdy. Counter-Strike onto oh. Masu. Masu's getting chunked. Masu flashes away, able to escape the grasp of Smoothie. King's running low. Here comes Spyrax. Here comes Faisal. Yuji still trying to bring it in as the Ethereal Chain's able to find the roof. Feather Storm found by King. Dropping away is going to be Surdy. Ryoma with the shutdown. Evil geniuses, you can never count them out, man! As Masu gets slain, Yuji empty handed on redemption, evil geniuses! Get an unofficial ace! Wow, an incredible turnaround coming through from EGC. They cut down that gold lead in half, and they managed to pick up some much needed gold on the king. And this is tough because this starts with Winsome getting caught out here. Really good punish there. King and Smoothie, 100 to 0 him. Perfectly, and then you gotta give props to King for holding on to that. All right, he didn't have the feather storm actually. So, the problem what ended up happening here, Yuji wasn't able to get any value from that ultimate, and they really just didn't have the numbers advantage at any point. Because if we look at respective laners at every point, EG got the first move, and even though FlyQuest made it look close, Evil Geniuses. They played their limits really well, maximized the uses of their health bars. If you see where everyone ends yes. up at, and they got the ace, like you said. Yes, that was incredible on both their targeting and who was actually tanking the damage. Great team fight coming out from Evil Geniuses. They're now looking for a pick in the bottom lane as Faisal gets caught out by Surdy. Explosive cast comes out, sends nice Smoothie job. going the opposite direction, and as you said, will be a little bit more chill. Has a cold beverage to walk his way back home. And I will say, even though that was a great fight coming through from Evil Geniuses, and they deserve praise for it, they're not out of the woods yet, Eric. You're yeah. still behind. You have no dragons as FlyQuests are halfway to a Hextech soul. You have no way to contest this next Herald either. It's going to easily go over to Yuji, and you lost first brick. So Evil Geniuses, they still have a lot of work to do if they want to come back into this one. If they're able to make plays on to someone like Faisal like they tried and actually succeed, that's the first step for them to being able to knock down some of these turrets, maybe get set up on the, uh, get river control so they can set up for objectives. He's right now taking stock of the map. Minute 40 before the dragon comes down, we'll give a dragon soul point over to FlyQuest if they're the ones to establish that. And look at this. 
The poke is going to get a little bit more brutal for EGC to have to deal with. Spyrax did just finish uh, the Mana Mune. At the same time, you do have the Divine Sunder finished by Surdy. So those big purchases now coming through. As it does seem like this is something that Evil Geniuses want to take. They do want to set up around this Dragon Fight. Again, Evil Geniuses have very, been very, very calculated with their plays. FlyQuest have been very disciplined with some of theirs in the past, and we need that discipline to shine out if we're going to see a game four. FlyQuest still in a good position. Again, you're halfway to a Dragon Soul. You have a Herald that you're sitting on and a mid-tier one that is low as can be. So it's going to be a pretty clear setup for FlyQuest. They still maintain pretty solid control over the river. You can see the pressure they have mid, and they're just waiting for the time where they can drop that Herald and walk the dragon. If they can get that, walk away, they're in a fantastic position because even though Spyrax is a little ahead of the curve with that second item, Masu isn't quite there yet. You want the Nasher's Tooth to come through for this Kai'Sa. That's when you feel really good. And here's the thing, he's not Spyrax... Even going Spyrex was able to get that brick over in the top lane, even yeah. though his farm is just slightly ahead, his KDA doesn't look the prettiest, he still has a lot of gold, and it shows off the fact that he has two items completed. One Shock Blast uh, going through the gate was able to chunk out about a quarter of the health of Surdy. That is the poke that FlyQuest can set up if they want to take dragons. Wow, and there it is. They actually managed to get the tier one turret first, and they're gonna escort the Herald. Wow. And, oh, they're looking for point a kill. In. They got a great choke point, and Armeo's dead in the blink of an eye. FlyQuest posture forward, here comes Faisal, oh, pulls yeah. in King. The flash comes in from King, but he can't get away from the killer instinct. Surdy hops over the wall to find safety, but FlyQuest, they're marching like they own the place. And you see it, he, our male gets caught out again. The teleport to prevent more from being lost is good from Faisal as well. And surely they don't look to end the game here. And they're oh just my gonna word. let the Herald charge. Surely they just walk away. Oh, the yeah, teleport was canceled by Faisal. Yeah, they stopped the teleport and they destroyed a Nexus tower. Just leave. This is very, very ambitious if you do want to stay here. You got hex gates to get and you on out. Wow. Not even the counter strike will stop as Spyrax might get caught out by Ryoma nice. here if he goes for the chase, but a full burst from Spyrax will take down Ryoma if he's not careful. X gate number two, Shock Blast comes out, doesn't land. And look at that, FlyQuest. 18 minutes in, beat. 18 minutes in, and they did that to the base of EGC. Yeah, I mean, taking inhibitor this early is kind of a statement. The fact is, you usually don't want to take it at this stage of the game because you're worried about the gold and XP you're giving away with those super minions. It's a lane you can no longer farm. And the fact is, FlyQuest got chased so far, they lose out on the third Drake. You don't care about Soul as this team. This is, uh, you know, the little tiny cope wins that EG have picked up for themselves. And look at this play again. Winsome. I love the look. Winsome getting so much value out of this Hex Flash. And I feel like our mail has just been a punching bag for FlyQuest since level one. They have continuously pressured him over and over again. And, I can't, and it doesn't seem like he's been able to do much this game. Oh, he really hasn't. Yuji is reading him like a book. And not just that, Winsome having great engages with that Hex Flash. Both of these, fatilis, uh, these facilitators for FlyQuest Challengers, they're doing their job. And they're doing their job incredibly well so far. And more importantly, FlyQuest are not letting up on the gas pedal. They're not allowing Evil Geniuses to slow this down and try and play it by their terms. They are just rushing to get this game over with. And they're well on pace to make it happen. With this gold lead, they can do the Baron on spawn. And you have those item spikes you're hoping Smoothie. for. Smoothie has the angle. Oh, Smoothie. Each triple able to... Oh, we lost Deserex. Well, this was still a really nice catch out there from the teleport. A lot of damage though. I think Eric is back. FlyQuest are yeah, down a man. Back. All right, all right. Missed that little last bit, but Evil Genius is still able to take one right back onto Yuji. Smite is going to be down. But look at Masu! Killer Instinct goes deep! And he finds Ryoma! Oh, and now Corel did like sheep to the slaughter! FlyQuest dismantle Evil Geniuses! The only one to survive is 30, but that even won't last for long. A triple kill oh by Spyrax. And that's the game end. You wanted a bounce back while FlyQuest find an answer in game number three. It's not gonna be the sweep. They're taking us to game four.
and in such a dominating fashion. What a turnaround after going 0-2 in the series, having their backs against the wall, Eric. We are going to game four. Incredible, incredible play coming it. through from the squad. I mean, my word, my word, FlyQuest. To go through those first two games, which can absolutely yeah. break your mental, can be so disheartening, and to have that level of authority on your fight back in yes. game number three, immaculate from FlyQuest. The fact is that might be, we'd have to check, but that could be our fastest game in playoff so far as well. 18 minutes, 20, they were already in the base. Yeah, it, 21 minutes roughly was the end there, and like it was just unbelievably fast. This could be the start of the bounce back we wanted from FlyQuest, but this is only step one. Yeah, you got two more if you want to face fear in the lower finals. We are going to take a moment to throw it over a short break. When we return, we'll have Kangas with the Rally Cry Halftime Show. The LCS Challengers League is brought to you by Turo, the world's largest car sharing marketplace. Find your drive. 